Hi, welcome to this video about damage lessons from past disasters. After a brief introduction, we will look at um, the damage, different types of damages to build the heritage. Finally, we will move on to uh, lessons learned uh, from past disasters and which can be the remedial measures that we, we can put in place. And uh, finally, we will draw the main conclusions. Cultural heritage uh, represents really a vast collection of uh, unique assets of uh, in inestimable values. Um, of course, um, cultural heritage is a very peculiar category of built environment due to its uh, singularity, peculiarity, and uh, unrepeatability. Here in this slide, we show the statement of outst outstanding universal value for determining, determining the World uh, uh, Heritage Site. Um, which it is, of course, a quite complex uh, and um, a very detailed one. So based on 10 different criteria, based on the uh, concepts of integrity and authenticity of uh, the sites. Now, um, we also know that uh, nowadays, uh, due to the... Um, changes in, in in climate heritage uh, would be faced with uh, and it is currently being faced by a range of new pressures that are very different to those experienced in the past and of course from this we can uh, imply the fact that uh, heritage will be of course subjected to new uh, and, uh, and pressures with increased uh, magnitude and uh, also, also with an increased frequency. Let's look at some of um, the damage uh, damages that we can observe on, on built heritage. This um, sequence of slide is, is rather showing not the different typologies of damage, of damage but rather um, some uh, of the aspects of vulnerability of the heritage itself. So why, uh, especially climate change and uh, disasters that this brings um, influences and impacts cultural heritage. Um, of course, we start from this slide, which is linked to um, some um, damage due to uh, weathering. Of a, This is a coastal watchtower along the Mediterranean coast and um, but mostly is linked uh, we said damage is never the result of one cause but of multiple causes so combination of uh, weather action but uh, neglect so abandoned structure uh, with no maintenance and therefore of course um, with uh, the uh, ongoing uh, arsening of, of weather actions this is the result um, similar here in this other slide where we see uh, um, the collapse of uh, um, some uh, uh, wall, masonry wall in the archaeological site of Pompeii due to the heavy rains. Moving on, different uh, type of disaster, this time not connected to, um, uh, to climate necessarily, to climate change, but uh, of course uh, showing the fragility of, of, of heritage, so due to earthquake. Um, so here we have the collapse of the, of the vault in the Basilica of St. Francis in Assisi. Um, another uh, example, a recent one from Notre Dame in Paris. Paris, so the uh, damage to the roof structure, uh, but not only limited to the roof structure due to fire. And this is a perfect example also of um, how fragile can be uh, heritage, even those monuments that we believe are extremely well protected, very well maintained. In reality, they have an intrinsic uh, uh, susceptibility to, to, to damaging actions. Finally, 
floods. Uh, this is a, a flood, uh, seawater sea flood uh, in Venice. So we know the high waters occur in a different, uh, uh, um, in, in a cycle, in a cycle uh, way. Uh, but uh, um, of course, nowadays, these are becoming uh, uh, much uh, stronger. Uh, more frequent and the uh, level of water reaches uh, some heights that were not experienced before. So we can say that, um, of course, that the cultural heritage is very fragile to different actions, most of them linked to uh, climate change. Uh, but usually the damage, the um, um, cultural heritage object experience experiences is not uh, simply related to the magnitude of the event the, but that uh, is occurring but is determined by a series of conditions of the system so these conditions of the system are referred to as the vulnerability of the system so are the specific um, aspects related for example to the uh, um, damage conditions, the uh, material properties, so it can be related to the physicality um, of the of the object, but also to the um, uh, managerial aspect. Uh, so what is uh, uh, the use of, of a, a specific building, for example, or what is the maintenance strategy, if it is maintained or not, uh, if there are in place some emergency measures or some early warning system and so on. So these are all conditions that determine the susceptibility uh, of, uh, of um, cultural heritage uh, to damage. Of course, we um, in the past, um, uh, we have researched many different uh, disasters and we have drawn some conclusions or some lessons learned from the different um, disasters, especially in um, by looking at the different damages, by looking at uh, the failure also of some measures that were put in place and how this could be optimized. Um, in this sense, we uh, have developed uh, uh, within the project Product to Save, which is an interreg Central Europe project, a manual for owners of cultural heritage, in which we provide a basic tool for owners to uh, better understand the damage and better understand also what can be carried out when and by who. So the manual is uh, organized in three different physical scales. So looking at site, building a movable object scale, and also looks at different hazards, uh, floods, heavy rain, uh, windstorm, uh, temperature, draft period, and so on. Especially, it provides um, also a kind of um, some guidelines for the owners um, concerning the possible measures that can be implemented. And these are flagged by different uh, uh, labels. Uh, you can see in this slide, so we have do-it-yourself measure. So this is a simple uh, measure that can be carried out uh, even by uh, owners themselves or when some skilled uh, laborer is necessary or when the engineer is required. So in this slide, you see uh, examples of uh, the um, cards contained in the, in the, in the manual. So these are some typical damage for, for floods. So you can see, for example, the undermining of the foundation with the collapse, in this case, of the corner of a house. Or um, to the right, we have an example of damage to masonry due to uh, flood and so on. Uh, you can see that at the bottom of the card, we have the resilience measures divided into the three different um, blocks. So measures, um, prevention measures, emergency measures, and post-disaster measures. And again, here you can see the different um, labels that say whether the engineer or the labor, uh, the skilled labor, or um, or the do-it-yourself 
uh, measure can be implemented. Second slide, again, with, with flood here, it, is, it provides some example uh, of uh, damage to timber structures. Uh, for example, on the left, we have some damage due to biological agents. To the right, we have problem with um, stability of the subsoil due to, to uh, the water and so on. And again, we have sort of different prevention, emergency, post-disaster measures that can be implemented. Um, wind damage, so typical damage of the, uh, of, uh, due to wind, some light roofs, uh, for example, that are not sufficiently anchored to the masonry walls that are destructed, um, uh, destroyed by the wind action, or falling of trees on the roof structures, so subsequent damage and so on. So you can see in this slide, for example, some of the measures or most of the measures in this case can be do it yourself. Um, so preventive measures usually are related to some sort of inspection, some sort of documentation, some sort of also simple uh, repair uh, um, or improvement <clears throat> of the resistance of the component. So on the left side, uh, on the form on the left side, we have some checking of roof anchoring and install additional anchors if necessary and so on. So here we have another example of uh, a card dealing with the draft problem. Uh, uh, so shrinkage of clay subsoil. This is very typical uh, damage that creates uh, substantial cracking in, uh, in the masonry due to the differential uh, movement in, uh, in, in the building. Again, here we have instead a problem with uh, temperature, so frost uh, cycles. And now, for example, we can prevent this damage by installing some uh, covers during the winter, um, some wrapping, uh, and so on. So this is important also for owners uh, or even for managers to realize which measures can be uh, implemented very um, fast and very easily also by themselves without requiring major experts or major uh, design um, for, for it. So in conclusion, we can say that cultural heritage is unrepeatable and therefore we cannot losing any of it. Um, under specific circumstances, cultural heritage is very fragile. So we have seen uh, some examples and experience-based measures uh, have been uh, outlined that can be used to mitigate disaster uh, damage. So thank you for, for your attention.